The long wait of speculation is over. Many people are familiar with black holes and how terrible they may be due to their endless appetite for anyone unlucky enough to go too close. But a lot are also unaware of the white hole, which is the counterpart and just as horrifying. Since white holes have only ever been theorized about, this has changed with the finding of the first white hole by scientists. What are they? How do they function? What distinguishes them from black holes? And the most crucial question is, are we doomed to danger because of it? Welcome to another episode brought to you by High Technology. If you are new from this channel, be part of us by subscribing so you won't miss any future contents. As of today, come and explore with us the terrifying new realm of white holes that has recently emerged as a result of recent scientific advancement. Black holes are feared, enormous, lurking objects in outer space that can engulf anything in their path. The white hole on the other hand is the counterpart to it. Although a white hole is equally horrifying, it is important to understand how black holes form in order to really appreciate it. The descriptions are important to notice because many of them also apply albeit in reverse to white holes. Although there are three major types of black holes, they can be found in a variety of sizes. The type of black hole depends on its mass and size. Primordial black holes are the smallest of all. This kind of black hole, according to scientists, has the mass of a massive mountain but is as little as a single atom. Stellar class medium-sized black holes are the most prevalent kind. Even though they are relatively small, stellar black holes have masses that can be up to 20 times higher than the suns. They can easily fit into a ball that is around 10 kilometers in circumference. The strong gravitational attraction they have on other objects is caused by the dense mass concentration. Numerous stellar mass black holes are thought to exist within the Milky Way galaxy. According to scientists, supermassive refers to the largest black holes, which are larger than a million suns put together. Nevertheless, they could all be contained in a ball that was roughly the solar system's diameter and size. According to scientific evidence, the center of every giant galaxy is home to a supermassive black hole. Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, has a mass of roughly 4 million suns and a diameter that is roughly equivalent to that of the sun. What causes black holes to form? Soon after the Big Bang, in the early cosmos, primordial black holes were produced. When the core of an extremely massive star collapses on itself, stellar black holes are created. A supernova or exploding star, which sends a piece of the star into space, is also brought on by this collapse. Supermassive black holes are thought to have developed along the galaxy they reside in. The galaxy's size and mass have an impact on the supermassive black hole's size. Scientists can observe the impact of a black hole's immense gravity on the stars and gases around it, but they cannot see a black hole since its strong gravity prevents even light from escaping. Scientists can examine a star's velocity to determine if it's orbiting a black hole if the star is orbiting a specific location in space. High energy light is created when a black hole and the star are in close orbit. This high intensity light can be seen using scientific equipment. Sometimes a black hole's gravity is so intense that it can rip away a star's outer gas and form an accretion disk around it. The accretion disk gas spirals into the black hole reaching extremely high temperatures and emitting X-ray photons in all directions as it does so. Astronomers utilize the data from NASA telescopes that measure X-ray photons to understand more about the characteristics of a black hole. Will our sun ever transform into a black hole? Not actually because of a restriction. The sun is spared from destruction because it lacks the mass to merge with a black hole. Yet it won't live forever. In billions of years, as the sun reaches the end of its existence, it will evolve into a red giant star. It will then shed its outer layers and transform into a blazing ring of gas known as a planetary nebula once it has expanded all of its fuel. After all is said and done, all that will be left of the sun is a cooling white dwarf star. But this will all happen millions of years forward that it wouldn't be sensible to think about it in the present. Now let's talk about white holes, which are exact opposite of black holes. In actuality, it is a black Black hole seen from the past. As previously said, once matter enters the event horizon of a black hole, it is doomed and unable to elude its powerful gravitational attraction. Similar to this, a white hole is an area where spacetime flows inescapably outward. It is claimed to have an event horizon radius that prevents any matter, including light, 
from entering. It is thought that the white hole emits light with the same intensity as a black hole and with the same force. Even if a crew of fools tried to enter a white hole, the sheer power of the gamma rays would wipe them out along with their ship. But let's say the ship is sturdy enough to survive that kind of energy. Even so, the nature of space and time around the white hole makes it so that the amount of acceleration needed to enter increases as you draw closer. In other words, it's best not to try because entering a white hole demands more energy than the universe itself. As you might have guessed, the mathematical obsession with black holes led to the discovery of the theory of white holes. Albert Einstein came to the conclusion that although spectators traveling at an accelerating speed perceive time differently, this does not hold true for observers traveling at a constant speed or remaining stationary, and that the spread of light is independent of all motion in 1905. Later, Einstein published his theory of general relativity, which came to the conclusion that gravity is not a real physical force but rather a distortion of time and space that affects objects with mass. Carl Schwarzschild would next employ Einstein's field equations, solving them to discover the equation of mass in a region devoid of all matter or in empty space-time. Because of the complexity of the resulting equation, we will spare you the details of the Schwarzschild metric, which is a mathematical model of a black hole. Schwarzschild had formulated an equation for a totally static black hole that experienced neither charge nor change. A black hole that has always existed and whose size does not vary is the one in the question. Keep in mind that all events occur at or beyond the event horizon, infinitely distant in the future, making all occurrences appear to never occur to an outside observer. The short shield metric demonstrates that near the idealized black hole, space and time swap places, causing the black hole's singularity to occur in some unavoidably distant time rather than a specific location. A dying star is visible when time is reversed in a real black hole, while a white hole results when time is reversed in an eternal black hole. White holes, however, are not universally accepted by scientists, which makes the current discoveries concerning them all the more important. Why then do some scientists question the existence of white holes? They contend that the white hole is not necessarily useful even though it obeys general relativity and is mathematically sound. White holes are therefore considered an improbable possibility by some scientists. They can't be fully ruled out, but they also don't anticipate seeing one with telescopes. Their reasoning is based on the observation that this behavior defies the second law of thermodynamics, which states that entry Entropy in the universe must either rise or remain constant. Entropy is frequently referred to as chaos, although it is actually best understood as an expansion of the number of states that are conceivable for particles in a given system. Consider a house that has been reduced in ruins as an example. The fact that the debris can be used to create a variety of buildings, including sheds, bookshelves, mounds, and paper, while a house is merely one particular condition of those particles, serves as an illustration of a rise in entropy. Now, now, tiny local entropy drops are possible as long as the entropy of the cosmos as a whole is rising, because they take things with low entropy like planets and scatter it over vast areas over time, increasing the chaos of space. Black holes are excellent at this. White holes which spew matter contravene this law since they reduce total entropy. Physicists contend that the time cannot move backward for the same reason. However, this does not disprove the existence of white holes. A black hole might undergo a quantum bounce or an outward pressure and change into a white hole. According to the theories of theoretical physicist Carlo Rivelli, after they could no longer evaporate and contract due to the limitations of space-time, this means that while black holes turn into white holes practically immediately after they originate, we on Earth continue to view black holes because of the gravity-induced time dilation. If this idea is accurate, black holes that developed in the early cosmos may be poised to die and develop at any time into cosmic rays or another type of radiation as we may have seen. Swift, a NASA spacecraft, discovered the extraordinarily potent gamma ray burst GRB 060614 in a peculiar area of the sky back in 2006. These bursts can often be divided into one of two groups. Typically, a supernova will have both a short burst and a long burst. However, GRB 060614 did not, despite being 102 
seconds long, it was not connected to any stellar explosions. For comparison, the majority of gamma ray bursts barely last at around 2 to 30 seconds. GRB 060614 occurred in a galaxy with a relatively small number of stars capable of exploding or enduring extended bursts. Astronomers and astrophysicists believe that this gamma ray burst appeared out of nowhere and quickly collapsed in on itself. But a few years later, researchers proposed that the idea that GRB 060614 might have been a white hole. Why did they reach this judgment? This is due to the fact that GRB 060614 exactly captures what one would expect to observe from a white hole, namely a powerful unstable fountain of matter and energy that vanishes soon after creating typically from a location that is too small to be seen. This theory is supported by the fact that there is no alternative explanation in the realm of current scientific models. According to Carlo, the geometry is practically mathematically identical in the two instances. This scenario has an intriguing result because it implies that the universe will eventually become dominated by white holes, which will obviously occur billions or even trillions of years in the future. Even on a fundamental level, it is possible that we will live in a white world after all the stars have collapsed and the ensuing black holes have withered. This is due to the Big Bang Theory's resemblance to traditional white hole behavior. What were your assumptions regarding white holes? Do you think science will get further with its discovery? Let's hear what you think in the comment section down below. That's it for today's video and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more incredible videos like this. This has been High Technology serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. Until then, see you!